Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and to the third video in what ended up being landscaping month here. I guess April showers bring May flowers and it turned into three landscaping videos. Today, obviously, you've seen the thumbnail, you've seen the video, whatever. We are doing cottage style landscaping. Now, I will be heavily referencing the first video in this mini series. However, you do not need to have watched it in order to understand and get anything out of this video. But if at any point you feel a little bit lost or like you're missing something, that's probably why. So I will link it at the end of the video for you to go back and watch if you so choose, but you don't like need to go and watch it right now. You'll be fine, I promise. Also, unlike the other two videos in this mini series, I actually have a Pinterest board for this one. So here are some photos from that for you to watch while I explain what we're doing in this video. And if you like any of them, the board will be linked down below in the description so you can follow me over there. I just hit 150 followers on Pinterest, which is like crazy. So thank you so much for that. And you can find some inspiration photos and stuff there or send me stuff. So we are using the super duper basic landscaping method today that I introduced in that first video. However, we're just sort of leveling it up a bit to become cottage style. Basically, we're going to introduce more plants in a strategic way to keep it from looking completely random. And we're gonna talk about moving the plants onto the build with like flower boxes, vines, stuff like that. Now, I will be using a lot of packs today just because I can and I like highlighting the different items in the different packs, especially in debug, which we will get into today. But by no means do you need to have packs to get a good cottage garden. Now, a couple of the things that set cottage style landscaping gardens apart from like suburban flower beds here in the States is they actually have heavily incorporate things like herbs and berries and basically harvestables right here in the game. I think we'd call them harvestables, you know, plants that your sims can interact with basically. So I'll talk about how to best add those to the landscape as well. And of course, to round it out, we'll talk about some common garden structures, um, like some different ways to add ponds as opposed to just digging a hole in the ground, which we've done in the last couple of videos. So if you want to figure out how to do that, you can watch one of those. I'll also talk about building gazebos or pergolas, as well as using platforms to create tiered landscaping as opposed to just like making cliffs, which again, we've covered in the last two videos, so doing a few little different things today, but overall, all in all, we should have a lovely cottage garden with a lot of inspiration for your next cottage build. Well, that's all I've got on my sticky notes, so I guess it's time to start landscaping. In the first video, I mentioned how to start with your basic landscape. You're gonna take one bush, three flowers, make sure your rocks match the world, and a filler. So what that would look like would be one green object with no flowers on it, three different plants that do have flowers on them, rocks swatched to match the world, which in our case is going to be pretty gray based on a lot of these rocks that we see around us, that nice cool gray, and then one filler, which is just a low-lying plant that grows directly out of the ground. This was not the best option I could have grabbed. This is the one I use most often, uh, but something like this, just very, very short to sort of fill in some gaps. This will give everything a very cohesive nature while still being diverse enough in color and shape that your eye is not going to get too bored. However, like you saw in those pictures, we actually really want to up the amount of randomness and chaos in the cottage garden, so we are going to add a lot of plants to this and different swatches as well. So instead of starting with just one bush, I'm going to start with three. And something I really like prioritizing is just having like a base shrub, like one that your eye almost doesn't even register because it's so boring and then two others that are quite different in shape and or size and or color so like i'm going to use these these two are a similar shape overall but different colors and different size and then this one is just completely different shape size and color altogether next up flowers now before for like the more traditional sort of suburban landscape you'd want three all together whether that's three different like completely different or three where it's one of one and then one that has two swatches like this and then for a really big lot maybe you'd go up to four or five uh, but this is all you're going to work with However, for a cottage style landscape, we want to start with a base of many more plants than this. Specifically, we want to have at least three different plants and multiple swatches of each of those plants that we're going to be using. Just an FYI, any of these lavender plants from whatever packs they are, these would all count as just this is just one plant, one swatch. It just happens to come in multiple different shapes. Uh, but for like math reasons, this all counts as one. So on top of that, I'm going to grab three other plants. Again, trying to get some variety in size here, and I want at least two swatches of each of these. Now, since my hydrangeas are quite large, I am only going to do two swatches of those and then three of these others. And just like before, you want to set all of your swatches before you start landscaping so you can make sure that they all work well together. And then if you decide to change one, it'll be really easy to just run through and re-swatch a whole bunch of stuff later instead of trying to replace every single plant with something completely different. 
So maybe I'm going to go with some purple over here to complement this purple. I have some pinks, a lot of white, and a little bit of yellow as well. Next up, I'd grab the rocks, which I like to just pull them all out and get them all swatched right away and then set them off to the side and pull from that. Now, if you really like rocks and want to use a bunch of them, you could probably leave a couple of them a slightly different color like this. That will add a lot more variety, believe it or not, just those couple of small changes to your landscaping. I think I'm going to keep them all gray though. And then for filler, instead of one, we are going to grab two or three. I have a lot going on over here, so I'm probably just going to pick two since I'm technically starting with nine different flowers. So I'm just gonna pick two filler plants. But if you ended up having a slightly smaller selection of flowers, like maybe you didn't have the yellow ones, then I'd go ahead and pick three fillers, which are again, any flowers that sit nice and low to the ground. And these you want to pre-swatch as well. Uh, so maybe I would want the pink ones or the yellow ones, but I don't think I'd go with the blue since I don't really have any other blue in there. But whatever the swatches I'm going to use, I'm going to pick that now. Also, if you have a keyboard, use the number pad plus and minus keys to sort through the swatches before you play the object. Now I just picked up Outdoor Retreat with the last sale and I really like some of these little flowers that they have so I'm probably going to use those. Although this one from Jungle Adventure is also quickly becoming one of my favorites. Oh and the colors do actually kind of go. Okay so maybe I'll use one of each. Uh, great base game filler items that I use a lot are the low-lying pale yellow flowers or in the flower section the Oopsie Daisies especially since they added more swatches to these. Like Look at these, they are so pretty. Now that I have all of the plants picked out that I'm going to use, I'm going to just set them off to the side so that I can pull them in when I need them. Now I always recommend landscaping with the move objects on just because it's so low risk and it looks better, um, especially with the cottage style landscaping. Uh, so control shift C and then BB dot move objects except type it correctly. There we go. And now your move objects cheat is on. Now I'm going to paint where I want my plants first. I'm going to use the garden bedlam, but you can use whatever color you think suits where you're, build where you're landscaping. Uh, and you want to use a decent size circle brush, but make it kind of soft. And then I want to have landscaping around this side of the door over here, definitely in this little area right here and right here. And if I want my paths to connect about like this, then I think I'll add another area for landscaping here in the middle. Next, we're gonna use the same method we used before, where we're going to start with one of our bushes, place three or five in a total of an odd number or an odd number of groups. So if I place three like this, that counts as a total of an odd number and an odd number of groups. If I resize these and place them together, then it is a total of an even number of groups, but still an odd number overall. And if I place a couple like this, then it's going to be an even number of groups and an even number of bushes overall. And this isn't exactly like illegal, I just find that a good rule of thumb to work with uh, is to try and shoot for those odd numbers. So I'm going to start with those like that and then do the same thing with these where I want to go through. Uh, the grasses behave a little bit differently. I know they act almost halfway between a filler and a shrub. Also hold shift and alt at the same time on your keyboard to, first of all, alt lets you place free of the grid and shift lets you place multiple one after another, which is extremely handy. So the grasses I might use more as a little bit of a border, but if I have them sort of sticking out anymore, I definitely still want to add a little bit of dimension by resizing some and not just having like a single clump. I want to be able to see multiple uh, groups of the same object. Now resizing for me on the PC is with the bracket keys. However, if you are playing on console, here are your controls. So there's another set of the bushes, and then finally I'll go in with this one. And really what we want to accomplish with our greenery here is sort of starting a base for our other plants to grow from. And I realized I was going to place three or five, but then I remembered that that was for the flowers, not the bushes. The bushes I tend to do sort of just all at once. So I want to start with something like this. Not everything is completely filled in. Obviously we need a lot of space still, but it's giving us enough of a structure that we can start layering some of those flowers on. I like to do my rocks after this, and I especially like to uh, size them up. And actually at this point I'd recommend just using your eyedropper tool so that you don't lose any of those. So eyedropper it and I like to scale them up especially toward the center of these larger areas so that you don't just have like flat flowers across. Rocks I don't really have a set formula for. It's more like does it make sense in your heart then go for it. Uh, but I definitely like making sure that every bed in my landscape has uh, something going for it in the rock department. Now, if you're a fan of rocks being borders, this would be a great place to add some of those. Uh, you'd wanna scale down your rocks, hold Alt and Shift, scale it down, hold Alt and Shift, 
scale it down, hold alt and you get the picture. Uh, and just do this over and over again to make a little border around wherever you need. Once you have some rocks in place, we can start adding our flowers. So what we're going to do with these is grab one and place around your landscape five of them. So I'm going to start with my pink hydrangea here and I'm going to place one, two, three, four, five. And you can see I just placed it sort of randomly, but making sure it's touching something else. And then I'll go in with my next flower, which will be maybe my white sun rose here. Now to place one, maybe scale one down for right here, two, three, four, five. And I'm gonna do this with each one of my plants. So what this is letting me do is slowly build up my garden so that everything is going to feel random. I'm not just going to place a bunch of one plant and accidentally take up too much space. It gives each plant almost like a fair chance at being seen. It keeps things feeling random, but because we already picked our color palettes and our plants, we know that whatever we're going to start stacking together is going to look just fine and dandy. So at this point, after you've done your first round of landscaping, you're gonna wanna look through and see how things are going. Like right here, this is looking pretty full, so I'm probably not going to add too much else here uh, but of course I could always maybe scooch these rocks out a little bit maybe pull these out um, you know just move things around a little bit same over here this is looking pretty full as well but obviously I have a lot more layering I can do in this area and I think over here I'm just going to hold off until I add more fillers so at this point I'm gonna take each one of my plants again and add another three to five probably three of the larger ones and then five of the smaller ones at this point, everything is looking pretty full, so I'm gonna go in with my fillers, and basically what they're here for is to cover any little bit of dirt that we maybe don't want uh, to have seen to add a little bit more of a slope out uh, so that we don't just go from super tall plant abruptly to flat ground. Now we're not quite done yet. The next thing we wanna go through and do is check and see if we need to resize anything. So like maybe these I feel are a little bit too big for right here, I can scale them down and then just make sure that they're still placed decently. Maybe I wanna bring this one forward and scale it down a little bit. You know, so at this point you're just gonna go in and sort of fine tune some things. Also with your rocks, you can use nine and zero to raise and lower your plants to sort of stack some plants on the rocks, which can look really nice. I put that one a little bit too high. There we go. So you can probably tell, right, if we added too many plants or if we were just putting down plants randomly, it might have too much chaos and color. Uh, but by picking multiple swatches of the same plant that can cut down on it, cut down on that a little bit uh, without just completely like making it too basic by just using the same plant over and over again. Now at this point if you're looking through and you're like wow I really don't like I don't know this pink swatch right you could go through and just recolor them as kind of purple I guess if we wanted to make them pink instead you'd be able to go through and just recolor the plants that you aren't as big a fan of the color of and not necessarily have to go through and delete all of them and replace them with something else. So just a few seconds later and I have changed some of the colors in my landscaping uh, with minimal pain and effort. What you'll want to do next most likely is grab that same terrain paint that you were using for under the plants. Just widen the area. We're gonna add a little path here. Bring your little softness thing back toward the middle. Grab some gravel or stone or whatever else and then you can use that to actually paint your path on top of the dirt. Now I'm not going to worry about, first of all, running my gravel under the plants, about having some parts of my path that are going to be wider than others. Uh, it'll all just add to some of the unevenness and organic shapeness uh, <laughs> that this garden style is known and loved for. Delightful. So I did mention harvestable plants, so let's talk about working those into the landscape. We're going to do a few commands. First, we have to actually enable debug. Well, you don't have to enable debug. You could buy seed packets and plant them or get them off the gallery, but here's how to get them from debug. Uh, so open up your cheat bar and type bb.showhiddenobjects. bb.showhiddenobjects. It doesn't have to be all caps. I just hit caps lock at some point. And bb.showliveeditobjects. If you spelled them correctly, you should be able to search in your search bar either by typing debug or just clicking this little thing and bam, there's a whole bunch of debug stuff. Now I have a lot of new things here just because I just got those couple of new packs. Um, like I have this tree, oh this has glowing lights on it. Hang on, does this actually light up? Nice. Well, this is delightful and not at all what I was looking for. Uh, but now you have all of these debug items accessible and you can scroll through for ages and ages to find what you need. Or if you don't feel like scrolling for ages, you can also type what you're looking for. Uh, for example, I should be able to type apple tree and search for apple tree and my apple trees will show up. Now there are a few options here, right? We've got the rural apple tree, which is just a plain old tree. This does not produce apples, although it is quite pretty. I don't know why it has a glowing shadow, but it does. I should probably go back to daytime. There we go. Uh, we also have the garden plant 
and a couple of other apple tree options as well. Now this one has to actually place in a planter, I think, so we're not gonna mess with that. Uh, but these two apple trees will grow when they're in season, which evidently they aren't right now. Now the other thing I wanted to show you with this is you'll actually want to turn move objects back off. So move objects off. You should get that confirmation. Uh, because these are kind of picky where you put them for them to grow and it'll just be easier if you turn off move objects, remove some of the guesswork for yourself. So now hold your alt key and you just want to push it into your landscape until that little box turns red. So when it's still green, then you'll plant it there. Your plants must be accessible from at least one angle for your sims to be able to, you know, tend to them and harvest them and stuff like that. So we wouldn't want to place it like in the middle of our plants anyway. Some of the plants will show up with that, but if that's not working for you, you can scroll until you just find either individual plants like this that your sim could plant in the area, or you'll come across more plants like the plantain, plant, plantain tree or pomegranate tree. I want to show you one of the actual bush plants though, because that's what I was going for. It's just gonna take me a second to get there. Well, I gave up, still can't find the actual like bush versions of these plants, but I can find the things that you can plant to make them grow. Uh, so that's delightful, which also provides a pretty decent segue into my next bit, which is here's how to find them on the gallery because sometimes debug is not your friend. I thought that the bush plants were in there too. Anyway, go to gallery, connect, wait for years and years, then go to rooms and item name and start typing in some of the produce you want. From here, you'll actually find some of those plants. So we've got a perfect blackberry here by Mrs. Fredericks. Thank you, Mrs. Fredericks. I'm going to use this in my video now. Uh, so you can place the plant, well, place the room, and then you grab your plant. And just like with the other one, we're going to hold alt and push it toward our landscape. Not too far though, right about there. So now it sort of blends in with the landscape, right? But your sim can access it and get it all harvested and everything. As always, highly, highly, highly recommend play testing for any of this. I checked to make sure that it worked before I started recording, but you never know which plant is just gonna overlap a little bit too much and it'll technically place, but then it won't actually be harvestable and whatever. So always play test, um, especially if you're going to upload it to the gallery. But that's how you add harvestables to your landscape, including finding stuff on the debug menu and or the gallery when the debug menu is being done. Another thing I like to do in debug, uh, which we could have done at the beginning, but of course I didn't because I didn't think of it, is sort by the world that you have and actually grab some of the flowers from the world to incorporate into your landscaping. So I am in the cottage living world right now. I can't believe we've already had two expansion packs since cottage living. It still feels so recent. Uh, so I'm gonna start by cottage living and I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom and find some of my world plants. So they can be cute little flowers like these. The mushrooms honestly are always a great touch so we can put some of those in there. And remember we have move objects off so this being able to place anywhere should mean that it won't interfere with anything that your sim is trying to do. So that's fun. This is one of my favorite plants from the debug menu. I just think it's so fun. Um, but yeah, lots and lots of great plants in the debug menu. So you can add these to your landscaping, either like one of these plants or move them further out, almost like your uh, planted landscape is starting to run into the like wild landscape, you know? So that's a way that you can add to some of those plants. Also, when you're in debug, it's a great time to find some sort of sculptures for your garden, whether that's actual sculptures um, or just like stuff that would look cool to have plants grow around, like this rusty old tractor. It all serves the same purpose. You can add it to your landscape, put some plants around it. It'll add something that's not a plant, give something for the eye to look at, cool screenshot opportunities, all that jazz. I also wanted to mention terrain manipulation just briefly. If you have a large bed like this and it's just still looking a little bit too flat, grab your terrain manipulation, raise the terrain, make sure you're going very soft, very slow, and have your circle fairly low. And you just wanna sort of run through a couple times like this. Everything should adjust automatically. You might have to go in and adjust some of the floating plants a little bit, but here, let me do an undo and a redo. Just that little bit of terrain manipulation can add a lot of height and interest. Uh, to your build. I might even raise one side up a little bit higher just for kicks and giggles. And the last thing to address with plants is bringing the plants onto your build because this is one of the best styles to start incorporating stuff like that. I have a lot of different options here, um, but some of the best packs for this would be Cottage Living. Jungle Adventure has some pretty decent stuff as well, although it is definitely very jungly, not very um, cottagey, although I'm sure we could use some of the items. Uh, but also Vampires and Growing Together has a couple of good things as well, and Vampires and Growing Together would go with the world a little bit better. So I'm going to turn Move Objects back on, Control Shift C, Control Shift C, BB Dot, Move Objects, 
make sure that it is on and there we go so with your vines i would try and grab almost like with the shrubs you want to grab one or two that are just plain old green to sort of start with your base and you want to have a couple of flowery ones as well and make sure that your flowers are complementary to the rest of your landscaping like we don't have any other blue flowers so i'm probably not going to use the blue flowered vines uh, but i do have yellow flowers white flowers and pink flowers so i could use any of those now this one actually comes on a trellis, so this is very much more of like a this is a supposed to be here vine, um, as opposed to some of these vampires vines, which are just sort of straight up growing on the wall. Or of course the cottage living ones, uh, which I think, what is this, what is this called? Wisteria. The wisteria. Uh, plants which almost work two for one they have the flowers and the bushy parts um, but these would be growing directly on the wall so if you want to have a newer cottage i would go with something supported and not a trellis like this but if you are a cottage to look older then i'd go for something just growing directly on the wall there are also these that came with the high school years pack which are pretty nice but yeah i think i'm gonna go with the growing together i'm gonna grab this green and i'm going to place these not flowering ones lower on my walls you also want to be careful and not use too many wide vines on any of the walls uh, that are curved if you have any curved walls because they don't really curve very well and they might also clip into your build so all sorts of fun things to be on the lookout for uh, but there are some of those vines and then i'll also grab some of my flowers and add some of those as well now these it can be really nice to scale down and sort of stack some uh, let me show you over here so if i just take this and then i take another one and try to stack it it's going to look a little bit weird so instead i'm going to scale it down so that I can extend the vine and have it look a little bit more natural. And I am by no means going to try and limit you to just one flower. You could definitely mix and match several as well, like grabbing some of these wisteria, especially if you're like me and you just are a sucker for arches and want to put, whoops, that is a flower box. Put some of those in your build and have something growing across it. These are fantastic plants for that. So there are some vines. Also flower boxes, kind of the same deal. Uh, whatever you grab, you kind of want to use similar colors to the rest of your landscaping already. So like maybe I'll grab some pink flowers for this little window box here. I like the ones that are sort of overflowing for the cottage style builds, uh, just because I feel like it, it fits the vibe a little bit better as opposed to the more neat and tidy ones. With that being said, this one is also a fantastic option. I think I might just straight up put that over the garage door. I think that that's really cute. So there's a crash course on adding vines and flower boxes. Layer them in and make sure they match, pretty much. It's just that easy. And that pretty much brings us to the end of the plants portion of the video. If you're enjoying it so far, please don't forget to give this video a big ol' thumbs up. That helps me on the YouTube platform. It helps me know as a creator what videos to make more of. All good stuff there. Also, heads up, for the first week, week and a half or so of June, I will not be posting on any platforms. We just have a lot going on that week, so I'm just taking it off. And I will be back, and when I do come back, I'm going to be mixing up live streams and hopefully doing a few more. Uh, so that'll be really fun. Keep an eye out for that. And now let's talk about some structures you can add to your gardens as well. One of the first things I want to show you guys is one of my favorite ways to add a pond, which I call a platform pond. And I think this little um, almost courtyard here could become a courtyard and be very nice. So I'm going to start with a flat square. You could start with a flat square or a platform, depending on what else you have going on and then grab your platform, but hold control to remove a portion in the middle. This can really be quite small, which is one of the reasons I like it so much. Really, it just has to be at least two tiles wide. Uh, so it could be as small as two tiles by two tiles. Then I'm going to drop out the floor in there, grab my flattened terrain, click in the middle, just flatten it out. Now you can add water in the middle there. And if you start getting your terrain, uh, like showing the foundation on the sides, that's fine. Grab the flattened terrain tool, just shrink it down a little bit and then run it along the edges and that should hide should hide that pretty quickly. There we go. Now this, of course, I do want to change the watercolor of probably just something kind of green and pondy. And this right here is a foundation, so I'll change the foundation color. So many fun options, but I think I'll go with this stone. And finally, I do want to paint the bottom with some dirt. It doesn't show up a ton, but it will show up enough that it's worth doing. Now, why do I like little ponds like this? Because they look like this, which is a really fun thing to add to your little garden. From there, of course, we'd add some stone. I like this one from the Vampire's Pack in particular. A couple of cute little benches, maybe even a small fountain, although it'd be quite small for such a small little pond, and some lily pads and a maybe some tadpoles. There we go could be nice too. Now I know the stickers on top of the lily pads, but the tadpoles will appear below and it'll be adorable. Then you'd add in more landscaping back here, just like with the rest of the lot. 
rocks, plants, all that jazz. And that can be a really cute little courtyard. Of course, if this was like a complete build, we'd want to doll this up significantly more, grab some more potted plants, maybe a flower arranging table, stuff like that. But this should at least get you started. Another great structure for front yard or backyard just for hangout would be a pergola or a gazebo. Now I find the easiest way to do this is to draw what you want with the custom room tool first. Now the main difference between a pergola and a gazebo is a pergola is open to the air and a gazebo will have sort of a actual roof on it, often glass, especially in The Sims because it's pretty. But the method is pretty much the same. You're going to draw the shape you want and then on the top, if you want to do um, a pergola, you're going to grab the smooth keeper fence and draw the lines across where you'd want your sort of cross beams to be, something like that. You can delete the ceiling, which I probably should have done first, oh well, and the walls. Add whatever columns you think best suit your build, sort of to support those cross beams. I also like to use the inlaid or jutting exterior trim under my fences. I think that that gives it a little bit of a better finish. Now for this part of the build, if you have your house with a medium wall height, then a great way to sort of help your gazebo feel a little bit shorter would be to raise the platform level, which is right here. So that will help it feel shorter, you just have to add stairs. But if it's short wall height and you don't want it to feel any shorter, then you would raise the foundation level here and again, add stairs or not. You could also just leave it on the ground. And if you prefer to have a roof on it, it's as simple as adding a roof. Now, I like to grab some of the thicker roof trim on these, especially if I'm going to do a glass roof because I'm not a fan of adding do this one of adding eaves to my glass roof pieces I just I feel like it looks weird um, I'd also pitch it down pretty significantly so that would be a glass roof on the gazebo if you do want it to be an octagon you might want to place the roof piece first uh, to make sure that it's going to sit on the room properly because this does look a little bit silly now we could add a what are these called spandrel I always forget what it's called around the edge which could help with that sort of support a little bit you could also add a fence around it or not, uh, but you definitely want to go with something that matches your theme. This one is from the Wedding Stories. It's, it's kind of tall, but it's cute, you know. It could work pretty well, especially if you wanted to have a little bit of a wedding in here. But maybe something like this would be a little bit too industrial for a cottage, and I probably wouldn't go with a hedge either unless you're building it on the ground and don't actually have a floor in there. Uh, that would just kind of look silly. Another thing you might see some of is a little bit of tiered landscaping. Now, of course you could do this with terrain, but I like using platforms as well. So I'm gonna take some platforms and I'm gonna draw one that's about two levels high and then make another one behind that a little bit taller as well. So there's the beginning of my tiered landscaping. Now to change the platform trim color, you're going to go here under all of the half walls and everything. Uh, we could grab some stone like we used for our pond over here or really anything else because if you don't like it, you can cover it up with other stuff. I like using the dirt floor in there just because I like putting my plants in dirt. And then from here, I'm going to take the exact same plants that I have in the rest of my landscaping, probably some rocks and gnomes too. And that's just a slightly more updated way to add some more height to your landscaping. Actually, I'm going to move the lot so you can see it a little bit better. Now, I would put this along with the uh, trellised vines, where you'd want to do this on something that looks a little bit more updated, more recently built. Not necessarily something that's been built like centuries ago, have been passed down through the generations. This is definitely more of a modern installation, but it's a really fun way to bring in more height and color and depth and interest to your build just with platforms. So I wanted to show you guys that today because it seemed to fit the video well enough. My computer is trying to crash and that's all I had on my sticky note anyway, so I'm going to leave this bit here. If you feel like I missed anything though, or you need a slowed down video, you want me to go more in depth on any of this, let me know. I'll try and make a short, cover it in an upcoming live, or bring it back up in a future video. Now, if you missed the first couple of videos in this series, I highly I recommend checking them out. The first one I just did the basics of everything landscaping and we also talked about building a forest that doesn't look ridiculous because uh, if you just try to build a forest and it's just 20 of the exact same tree it'll look kind of funny. As always though thank you so much for building with me today and I look forward to building with you again very very soon. Bye!